Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel as well as my series on the how to become to have 9.x certified and beyond. I hope you all are doing great. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. So let us begin. So this video we are going to continue from the last video session what we had this video is going to be the fifth in the series if you have watched my fourth video in this series is about the TOGAF document structure and the parts of TOGAF it was named as part A now if you paid attention to that particular video we looked at the TOGAF document structure mainly from the G116 specification perspective we went ahead and looked at how many parts the specification is made up of and how many chapters within each part it makes up and then we looked at the parts of TOGAF we defined each part part 1 being the introduction part 2 being the ADM which is the methodology itself part 3 being the guidelines and techniques part 4 being the architecture content framework part 5 being the enterprise continuum part 6 TOGAF reference model and part 7 the architecture capability framework Okay, in today's video, what you can expect is we will go to the next level of the details. So what I'm going to cover here is how does each of these TOGAF parts fit together? How do they correlate and coordinate with each other to achieve an organization's objectives? Okay, so that is going to be one of the topics in today's session. And then in the second topic, we will look at how TOGAF as a framework is made up of other frameworks. So what I call this as a, a framework of frameworks. Okay, so let us get started. So this particular diagram, what I call it as a sandwich diagram. Now the reason I call it as a sandwich diagram, because if you look at the leftmost side of it as well as the rightmost, think about these two as slices of the bread. And then in between the bread slices sit the TOGAF framework itself. Okay, so let us start by looking at the leftmost slice of the bread and then we will move along the arrow direction and then we will start looking at the rightmost side of the bread. Okay, as you can see it is a cycle. A left one you know, provide some details to the right and then the cycle continues. And then we will start looking at the TOGAF framework. We will break it as three parts. TOGAF capability framework, the top part we will see what it provides and then the TOGAF ADM and the content framework which is the middle part and then the bottom part which is the TOGAF enterprise continuum and tools. Let's see what it provides. Okay, We will walk through each of these arrow directions and we will see what it provides. So let's start by looking at what the business vision and drivers is about. So if you take any organization which is of any scale, whether it's a small scale, a medium or a large scale organization, which is an enterprise, each enterprise is made up of its business visions, and drivers. So what is a business vision and a driver? A business vision statement is the desired end state. What is the vision for that particular organization they want to achieve or be at? Generally the vision statements are a one sentence statement describing it very clearly and an inspirational long-term desired change. Okay, The change could be either from an existing or a change could be to the new state. On the similar lines, a driver, it could be an external or internal condition that motivates the organization to define its goals. An example of an external driver is change in regulation or compliance rules. Okay, So every organization will have certain drivers which drives the organization to move from one level to another level. So those will trigger and then once those are realized successfully is what an organization achieves its business capabilities. So a business capability, the definition or simply a capability describes a unique, a collective ability that can be applied to achieve a specific outcome. A capability model describes a complete set of capabilities. So what I'm saying here, every organization will have a set of capabilities
capabilities and these capabilities itself could be defined at different levels okay the capabilities could be at a high level or it could be at a lower levels so some of the examples of capabilities could be for an organization the products which they sell the sales itself the marketing okay if they have a customer service customer service could be capability finance and regulatory pricing and risks etc now on the similar end if you look at from a process organization they could have capabilities in terms of sales selling marketing service procure partner etc if it is more of an it kind of organization then in terms of business capabilities it could be business management product management marketing etc and then more of an it capabilities could be application development and management data management it planning and service delivery so it could be made up of different capabilities and as those capabilities becomes operational the enterprise the business learns new things either the capability needs to be improved renewed changed retired etc that again becomes a vision or a driver to an organization okay so quickly to summarize here an enterprise values mission statement vision drivers triggers the need for an architecture change now remember an architecture from our enterprise architecture definition is mainly made up of four different domains business architecture application architecture data architecture and technology architecture so any type of these triggering events will have impact on one or more of those domain architectures okay and when we implement successfully we will be achieving the desired capability and the cycle continues okay so now let's start looking at each of the togaf parts the first and foremost part here is the architecture capability framework now what does this provides as part of the togaf framework as an organization sets its vision goals and drivers that informs the size structure and culture of the capability what it means is to achieve a desired capability what type of organization it needs to have what type of process changes if required needs to be made what type of people roles responsibilities all that is required on the architecture capability perspective so the architecture capability itself provides certain things you know it helps us to set up an architecture governance it helps to evaluate the architecture maturity model what the organization has the framework also provides us with a skills framework wherein a particular organization will be able to define the roles responsibilities more from an enterprise architecture perspective now that is all depending upon what an organization wants to achieve so once you use the architecture capability framework you set the targets KPIs plans and budgets for the architecture roles okay what does this means based upon the capability at what level you want to operate to achieve a desired capability you set these up what is an KPI a KPI is a key performance indicator it is a measurable value that demonstrates how effectively an organization is achieving its key business objectives which they have set okay once you define an KPI then week by week month by month you keep on assessing to ensure that you are moving in the right direction to achieve the desired capability and as these capabilities are made available that drives the need for architecture capability maturity what it means is a set of capabilities makes up an organization now an organization could be operating at a certain maturity level okay and organization wants to move from one maturity level to another maturity level let's say from level 1 to level 2 level 2 to level 3 etc so the capability framework also provides how to manage the maturity and move from one level to another level effective operation of the architecture capability ensures realization of the business value so as you can see architecture capability framework is a key essential component of the framework so this is where you establish at what architectural capability level you want to operate at an enterprise level now the architecture capability operates a method depending upon the enterprise architecture practice the roles 
the tools what you have etc you determine how do you want to operate on the method the method here is the architecture development method the method itself is comprised of many many different phases okay again depending upon the business vision and drivers that gives an input to the method that provides the requirements in terms of identifying problems to be addressed and when you run these requirements to the method the method delivers new business solutions okay in my next topic i will introduce the adm and we will look at what is the importance of adm and what it provides when you start working on the architecture method you will use several guidelines and techniques provided by the framework the framework provides a set of guidelines and techniques okay you use them as part of applying to the method okay the method refines understanding of business needs okay so as you run through the method it refines and improves the business visions and drivers so as you work through the method the method produces content to be stored in the repository classified according to the enterprise continuum what this means is the architecture content framework it provides us several key elements in terms of content meta model architectural artifacts deliverables and building blocks as you start working through the method you start producing the relevant content required for your organizations okay so that is done through the architecture content framework the enterprise continuum and tools so this provides a way to classify at which level a particular enterprise is operating the enterprise continuum itself is made up of an architecture continuum and a solutions continuum and each of these continuums further classifies different levels of architectures okay from a very generic architecture to a very specific architecture for your organizations so as these business capabilities are operational changes updates the enterprise continuum and repository so every enterprise will fit into a particular classification of an enterprise continuum what it means is you may begin with a very generic foundational architecture and then make it more specific to your organization and then the enterprise continuum and the repository inform the business of the current state and then the togaf reference model these are the two reference model which togaf provides us to begin our work and organizations work the first reference model is known as the technical reference model and the second reference model is known as integrated information infrastructure reference model also known as triple i r m okay so as you can see every organization based upon what they want to achieve how do they want to achieve and when do they want to achieve as they run through the togaf framework the framework helps to achieve the business capabilities okay let's move ahead so the next sub topic in today's session is about how the togaf framework is made up of several other frameworks so i mentioned here as a russian nesting doll what it means is if you look at a russian nesting doll this particular doll is made up of one doll nesting another doll nesting another doll so it is something similar what you can see here it is made up of several different frameworks the togaf framework itself is made up of several other frameworks so let's look at each one of them the outermost architecture capability framework this tells us whether you or your team have the skills it is just not the togaf skills okay it is an enterprise level more from an enterprise architecture capability your enterprise could be made up of many other frameworks you talk about itil framework zackman enterprise framework togaf and so on so forth so it tells us a framework to work out whether you or your team have the skills not just the togaf skills needed to meet the architectural challenge and then the actual togaf framework okay this includes all the other frameworks this is the actual framework and then the togaf capability framework this is more what your organization is capable of implementing the togaf framework it is about the skills and ability of how better you can use togaf as a framework and then within that is the governance framework togaf recommends to use cobit 
as a governance framework and through the governance framework your organization will be able to define the roles responsibilities the architecture practice conformance of who belongs to what where when how who is responsible of making decisions etc so that's about the governance framework and this is the process framework the process framework is the methodology itself the architecture development method with the ADM guidelines and techniques it is a process framework then the content framework this provides us the meta models the deliverables the artifacts and the building blocks which an enterprise can use to develop their own content okay and finally the enterprise continuum and the TOGAF reference model these form a framework and guidelines of populating the content framework so as I mentioned earlier depending upon where your organization fits into and how do you classify them you know from a very generic a foundational architecture to very specific organization level based upon that you produce the content and of course which is not shown here the skills framework wherein TOGAF provides us you know how to define your roles responsibilities the knowledge of those areas is being provided by the skills framework okay as you can see in this particular slide the TOGAF framework is made up of more than one frameworks okay so let us review in today's session we did touch base upon two important subtopics how the TOGAF document structure coordinate with each other to achieve the organization's vision goals desires into the organization's business capabilities that was subtopic number one and then as part of the second subtopic we looked at how the TOGAF framework even though it is just one framework it is comprised of multiple other frameworks another key important point to remember here TOGAF as a framework and a methodology complements your organization's architecture capabilities it goes well it aligns with other standards, methodologies, frameworks, reference architectures which coexist within your enterprise. So what is that you can expect in my upcoming video? In my next topic, I'm going to introduce to the ADM, the core of the framework. We will look at what is the significance of ADM to the success of an enterprise what ADM is made up of, how many phases does it has, the steps, the objectives, etc. Okay, so that is what we're going to cover in our next topic. Okay guys, so that concludes today's session. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please take a moment to like it, to share it with your friends. Please comment, comments are always welcome and subscribe to my channel. Thank you once again. You all have a great day, great afternoon and a great evening. Until next time, see you and take care. Bye for now.